Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a beautiful 18th of January, 2022. Come to the Cresting Act Podcast, episode 161. Prepare. That's right. More trucker mandates, more political garbage, and a lot of friction on our rights and liberties, ladies and gentlemen. Listener and viewer discretion is advised. I will be swearing, and I do smoke cigarettes. All that and more come at the podcast. Please stick around. <laughs> Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. Yes, sir. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast, a Canadian veteran's point of view on political, social, economic issues, and life. Here's Krusty. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, episode 161 of the Krusty Knight Podcast. I'm your host, Krusty Canuck, coming at you from Alberta, Canada. Yes, prepare. Look what's happening to ourselves in the trucker world as we speak, ladies and gentlemen. All this other political garbage coming at us about vaccine mandates and what have you and what's going on. Yes, the big Omicron variant and other things harping and destroying us as we speak, according to mainstream media and uh, our uh, elected officials, yes, uh, what, a, what a poop show that's coming our way. Anyhow, I'll read a little article here I got from CTV in regards to what these truckers are going through. And I will put a video up from a Canadian trucker himself on what he thinks about the whole thing. But this comes from CTV News, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, once again, if you like and hear what you see, please click like and subscribe and share this all around your social media platforms. Help us independent guys get the word out there too. And try to rub it in the face of uh, the big tech censorship that's been prevailing all of us uh, these past few months in regards to this Omicron and everything thereof. So this comes from uh, CTV News there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, This comes uh, yesterday, two days ago. Just bear with me here. Actually, this was actually published on the 3rd of December. Ooh, so there's more stuff here, so. But I'll read along here, and I'll just stream up the page here for you. I'll get this out of the way. I'll share this here. Basically, the article doesn't look too promising, and what's been said and what's been going on right now, especially with truckers in this country and in our friends in the United States too, uh, it's getting really, really ridiculous on these mandates that they're trying to promote and, and get us uh, in tune with. So I'll read along here and I'll leave the links in the description as always for you, my fans and listeners like to read at your own leisure. But like I said, this comes from uh, business news, the CTV, one of the big three, you know, I've always chastised them, but it's still a decent story anyway. Uh, the main trucking lobbies in Canada, United States are warning that vaccine and testing requirements for workers will further disrupt supply chains because there's already a dire shortage of drivers Canada will require vaccines for truck drivers starting in January, while Biden administration has issued rules requiring truck drivers at companies with more than 100 or more employees be vaccinated or submit to weekly testing. More than two-thirds of goods trade between Canada and the United States travels on roads and highways. For most of the pandemic, truckers crossed the border regularly as they were considered essential workers to keep supply chains flowing. Well, yeah, of course. (coughs) And he will paraphrase this too. You got about 18,000 Canadians that haul freight across the border or more. And you've got uh, double that or triple that of Americans coming up hauling freight across our border. So if you sit there and constantly put more and more restrictions on that, you're going to su- sever the supply chain. Right? That, that's the thing. You're going to sever it. You know, I'll read on some more here. Yeah, we know that there's already a disruption in the supply chain. This is going to intensify it, said Stephen Lukowski, president and chief executive of the Canadian Trucking Alliance, the CTA, which represents some 4,500 carriers. It estimates that 10 to 20 percent are between 12,000 and 22,000 of Canadian truck drivers, and 40 percent of some 16,000 of U.S. truck drivers traveling into Canada would be sidelined if the requirement begins. This is not a trucking issue. This is a Canada U.S. economic issue, Lakowski told Reuters, adding about 70 percent of that $650 billion Canadian, uh, $507 billion uh, U.S., U.S. Canada trade moves by truck. The American Trucking Association, ATA, together with others, is seeking to block U.S. President Joe Biden's vaccine mandate in court. So it, it's turning into just a real poop show again, too. You have all these drivers crossing the border, 
for us, for you and me, to practically every product we have in, in our households, doesn't matter if it's refrigeration, foodstuffs, clothing stuffs, hygiene products, fuel products, eh? And yet our prime minister, Potato Head, and Joe Biden want to implement these mandates again. All in the name of health and safety. Now, how how unsafe, <laughs> how unsafe is our life going to be if there's a couple of truck drivers that might get sick? Okay. Like I, I said, over Christmas, I had a bit of a cold. Okay. I took some medication. I took some Advil. I took some NyQuil. Drank lots of fluids. Try to get plenty of sleep. And with about four days, it cleared up. Okay. It cleared up. And I'm not going to sit here and argue with the science or this group or that group. Okay. One of our main resources of receiving goods and services in both of our countries is being compromised now by two individuals and their supporters, Mr. Biden and Mr. Trudeau. Okay. Now, what gives? Honestly, what is the logic behind this? What is the safety behind this? Okay, you're going to stop this pandemic. You're going to stop the spread because a handful of truck drivers might get sick. You're going to stop the spread by telling people they're going to have to wait or increasing the wait times and increasing the, <laughs> the wait list for certain products like, you know, food and other essential items. Are we going to have another paper scare like we did when the first wave came around where people were stocking up on all this pooper paper just to make sure that everything was copacetic? You know? Like, you're doing nothing but instill fear and more panic to people. Okay? And the more the authorities, the more unions, the more these groups, the more drivers, the more doctors and nurses and legitimate scientists and people like you and me question that status quo, we're deemed as misogynists and racists or deniers or anti-vaxxers or anti-this or anti-that. So not only are you screwing the economy, uh, Mr. Trudeau and Mr. Biden, you're screwing with everybody's, everybody's life. And for what? In the name of safety? Huh? Or to bloody line your own fucking pockets. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And furthermore, too, okay, a year ago, you would not be firing any kind of doctor, any nurse, or any kind of medical practitioner if they questioned the validity. <laughs> uh, sorry, I can't speak English today for some reason. The valid point of these uh, the vaccines or the jabs, whatever you want to call them. Okay. Now I'm not anti-vaxxer. I'm not a pro-vaxxer either. Your body, your choice. Why does that seem to be such a dirty word? Why do those seem to be dirty words? Now here are truckers who are hauling freight. Both of our countries are feeling a shortage when it comes to people hauling freight. Now whether it's the wait times to get educated. Uh, to become a driver or certain courses are valid. Some aren't some instructors are legit. Some instructors aren't legit. Okay. I refer back to the old uh, Humboldt Broncos situation. Okay. But needless to say, we need drivers in this country and both of our countries to haul freight, to get goods to, and services to the people that need them. People that rely on, on grocery stores, people that rely on department stores, people that rely on day-to-day -day needs. Okay. And both of our governments seem to stifle it. Why is that? Hmm? It's because of situations like this and the panic and the so-called safety, okay, where people are losing faith in government, where people are losing faith in these elected officials. Okay? You're, losing, you're, you're losing the trust of the people you're supposed to be representing. Now, we all know that big wigs, once they get elected and they get in, they get a slap and tickle here and a slap and tickle there, and they get a few more bucks here and a few more bucks there. And then when they start in office, their net worth is roughly what? Their salary, $400,000. Then by the time they leave office, they're worth $6 million, $12 million, $25 million. All because of decisions they make like this, 
where they're going to have to force vaccines and make sure you get this and make sure you get and make sure everything's forced down your throat all in the name of safety, which is a bloody con, ladies and gentlemen, and you and I both know it. Right? Enough is enough. Okay, I support the truckers and I support people's decisions, whether they want a vaccine or they don't want a vaccine. I support getting people back to work. I support getting you into a position where you want to thrive, where you feel you must thrive. And I don't care if you're religious. I don't care if you're male or female. I don't care if you're black, white, Asian, First Nations. I don't care if you're English or French. I don't care if you're Hungary, Hungarian, Ukrainian. I don't care if you're East Indian, Pakistani. I don't care. I want all people in both of our countries to thrive once again and to get along and to bloody get ahead with hardcore determination and love of nations. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And like I said, ladies and gentlemen, if you like and hear what you see, please click like and subscribe. Do not hesitate. Please, if you'd like to uh, donate, just follow the heading below. You can follow me at KrustyConnect.ca donations. I take PayPal, buy me a coffee. Or if you want to send an e-transfer via my email, you can do that too. I'd like to make this a full-time commitment. Now, I am gainfully employed, right? So I don't need the money. But uh, if you do like want to donate, please consider donating at your own leisure. Uh, it doesn't matter to me how you do it. Just as long as you do it with sincerity and genuine uh, generosity, we're good to go. Uh, but if you also want to follow my show elsewhere, you can find me on Rumble, Brighton, and Wimkin is too. I try to load my videos and podcasts up there as well. And I also have a channel on Amazon Music. So I'll leave a link in my description uh, where you can follow the podcast uh, via Amazon if you so desire to. Anyway, carry on again with the prepare. Now, when I'm saying prepare, it means prepare for the BS. Now, I will encourage all my listeners and viewers out there to please consider buying some more dry goods, flour, soup mixes, canned beans, soups, stews, if you can, extra hygiene products. Now, I'm not saying go buy a pickup truck, troll of, uh, a pickup truck full of toilet paper, but use your head, okay? Common sense. And if you know somebody who is in need, don't hesitate to give them a hand too. A few extra rolls here, a few extra cans here, just something to break the monotony, right? Have the means of getting clean water and try to conserve as best you can too. You know, like say, I'm a cigarette smoker, so uh, I do have some tobacco, but uh, that's something I should quit, but that's just my issue. <coughs> Excuse me, like I say, my body, my choice, all that good stuff. But needless to say, I think it catch my point, ladies and gentlemen, and do what you can. And if you know any, any truckers out there, give them some support too. Because there's long hours on the road that they're away from their loved ones as well. They're away from their wives, their husbands, their kids, their parents, their friends, family, the whole works. And it's a long haul. And it doesn't matter if you start in Toronto and you end up in Orlando. It doesn't matter if you live in Montreal and you end up in Chicago. You're on the road back and forth, back and forth. They're long hours, long days. The pay is good, however. But when you get mandates that come from President Biden and Prime Minister Trudeau, it makes that job that much harder. And it leaves resentment and guilt and just a bad taste in your mouth, all because a few ass clowns are trying to do something for your safety when we all know they're full of shit. All right? So that's that's the thing. And if you want to contact me, folks, please don't hesitate to use my email. Contact me at crustybcanuck67 at gmail.com. All this information will be in the description, too, and links to the uh, trucker story from CTV. And the video will be playing for you shortly here, too. And I also have a little tidbit from Canada's new health minister, uh, Mr. Jean-Yves Duclos, I think is the, if I'm pronouncing his name right. And I'll let you decide, my viewers and listeners alike, on how well he's answering certain key questions when it comes to question period and our beloved parliament. But uh, I digress. I'll get on with uh, this video that came from uh, this trucker. And uh, I warn you, there's a lot of bad language, but you know, we're used to it. So don't worry about it. I'll just cue it up here. And I really want you to listen what he has to say. The passion in his words the passion in his determination and how much he loves what he does and how much he's fed up 
with a lot of this garbage. I'll just cue it up here, here for you folks. But uh, I, I think you can decide for yourselves how this works. You know, uh, it's just, it's, I don't know. It, it's just getting ridiculous how so many of these individuals are stopping doctors and nurses and shops and just people from getting along. And why? What, what are you going to prove? What's it going to prove? So, ladies and gentlemen, I'll let you decide. And I might have to turn the volume up. The volume is a little screwy on this video, but please uh, adjust your volume accordingly and just listen to what this guy has to say. And thank you to the fine people at BitChute and uh, Mr. Uh, the D-Train for putting this video up. So, here you go. Good evening, everybody. My name is Lee. I drive one of these. This is a truck I drive up and down the road every week. I've been with this company for uh, coming on nine years. March will be nine years. They run from Ontario, Canada, Florida every week. Sometimes we hit California, sometimes out to uh, Seattle, Washington. It depends what they got, where we go, but it's mainly a lot of Floridas. As of tonight, January 13th, 2023, I got back from my trip from Orlando. I had to empty out my truck. I took everything out. And uh, it's, it's after 11 o'clock now. I've, I've been back here probably for four hours, four and a half hours, something like that, cleaning the truck out. Uh, I've been put on unpaid leave thanks to Mr. Justin Trudeau. He came up with the mandates for the vaccine. Uh, Cross-border drivers must now be fully vaccinated to go into the U.S. And that takes effect on Saturday the 15th. His buddy, Joe Biden, he's got his mandate starting uh, January 22nd that truck drivers must be fully vaccinated to go uh, in, uh, back and forth across the border in, in the, into the U.S. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, look around your house, look at everything you've got. If you got it, a truck brought it. They're pulling how many of these off the road because drivers are refusing to get the vaccine? Oh, what do you, go get the vaccine, go get the vaccine, you can keep your job. No, we live in Canada here, people. It's a choice, it's a choice. You have the right to go get it. I have the right not to. Do I spend a lot of time seeing you people, to, uh, dealing with you in stores? No, my ass mm -hmm. is running down the road in this thing, bringing all the shit that you want. Your couches, your chairs, your clothes, all, all your shit. Your house that you live in. One of these brought the material to the, your site where you're living so that the framers could build it. The bricklayers could lay the brick. It was all brought on a truck. What, you think they carried it on their back? You think they put it in, the, in their trunk and when they came to work every day? Open your fucking eyes, people, of what the fuck is going on. Governments are supposed to be there to create jobs, to help people, keep the economy going. This liberal motherfucker that we got up there, he's trying to kill every fucking job he can, put as many people out of work. He's trying to drag the economy down in the country. Look at his spending. If you spent like that in your household, would you be bankrupt? Would you be broke by now? Oh, could you say, well, I want to raise because I fucking want one? Well, that fucking motherfucker, that's what they do up in Ottawa. They fucking raise their hand and say, who wants a raise? They all put it up. Okay, let's go 10%. And we fucking give ourselves a 10% raise. Wake the fuck up of what's going on. Go get the shot. Go get the shot. Go to your pharmacist, go to wherever you get the shot, ask them if you can see the insert, the paperwork that comes with the shot. It's blank. It's blank. They don't tell you what's in it. Everybody likes Pfizer. Go get Pfizer. Pfizer's a better one. Pfizer's a better one. Why? Why would Pfizer go to the FDA and ask for a 75-year extension to tell you motherfuckers what's in there? Because there's a lot of fucking bad shit in there and they don't want you to know what it is. You'll be fucking dead and they won't have to tell you. They won't have to pay. They won't have to be liable. Wake the fuck up. Like, holy shit. Your prime minister is supposed to be out there. Your president in the U.S. is supposed to be out there working for you to create jobs, to help the economy, to help, to help you survive and thrive. Is this surviving? Is this thriving? Hell no. Hell no. Kids in school, out of school, in school, out of school. It's like, what the hell? It's like they, they, they can't get it under control. Oh, my God. It's the unvaccinated making the vaccinated sick. When I heard that, I laughed. And then I had people telling me that. That's how fucking stupid they are. 
But they, they, they cannot sit there and think, wait a minute, I had a first shot. I had a second shot. I should be fully protected like Superman. I can go do any fucking thing I want. No, no, no. These motherfuckers turn and say, you, the unvaccinated sick, sick bastard over there, are making me sick and sending me to the hospital. Um, have them check what the fuck is upstairs, and I bet you it's empty. Hello, hello, hello. It's all they're going to find in there is fucking nothing. If you're thinking like that, what happened to your critical thinking skills, people? What happened to them? COVID. Oh, my God. COVID came around. Everybody went into a shit fit. Oh, my God. The Delta variant. The Delta variant. Oh, it's so fucking bad. Oh, Omicron now. It's oh fuck. It's 10 times worse. What's the next one after Omicron? What's it going to be? 20 times worse? It's all fucking bullshit. If you cannot see this, that this is bullshit, manipulation and control that of your government over you, there's something wrong with fucking you. Something fucking wrong. This all started with mandates, vaccine mandates for truckers. And there's a lot of truckers this week, by Friday night, that will be off the road doing exactly what I've done here, emptied the truck out. People, the only thing I can suggest, get your ass to a store first thing in the morning, stock up. Because when them shelves go empty, you're going to be looking for more trucks to bring it. And the trucks aren't coming. Not not the way they are now. Because there's this many trucks coming off the road. Government, 11, 12,000 is what they say. Do you believe the government? I don't believe the government. I drive one of the goddamn things. The numbers I'm hearing are in around 38,000 of them coming off the road. If these guys go across the border twice a week, that's 76,000 loads of freight that is not being put into the Canadian and the U.S. economy. That's 70, 76,000 loads of freight back and forth across the border. That's not going to be happening. That's 38,000 loads of freight coming back into Canada, your food, your clothes. That's 38,000 loads of freight not going out of Canada. So if you work at a manufacturing company, you're going to be back, stockpiled and stuffed because there won't be a truck there to pick it up. You don't see this? Wake up. Wake up, and I would suggest you stock up. Take care. Thanks. Well, like you said, wake up and stock up, folks. Like I just mentioned, I don't want to be belligerent about it, but there's something there that you ha might have to do. Might have to stock up some extra beans, soups, uh, dry goods, rice, extra paper, extra tobacco, extra liquor. Depends what you're into, but we got to start using our wits. And um, well, what gets me is that the mainstream media has spent more time worrying about the snowfall in Ontario and Quebec than the record temperatures that the West has seen and the shortages that are about to come. So whether this is pre-planned, whatever you believe in or not, you know, I'm not going to sit here and put my tinfoil hat on and go conspiracy theory. Oh my goodness. You're coming through the skies. What I'm saying is that this is some kind of pre-planned bullshit brought to you by the people we elected to look after our democracies, whether it's Mr. Biden in the States and his followers or Mr. Potato uh, puppet up here and his sock puppets extraordinaire. Okay. Now, I know a couple of truck drivers, and they verified uh, this issue. All this freight that comes across the border, two trips or three trips a week, if they're so lucky, will cease. So all the fresh fruit and vegetables that we get from America will cease. Right? Will cease. It will eventually dwindle away or go bad or not be put out in enough time. And there's a couple of people I know that work in the major grocery chains in this area and they've projected the same thing so there's freight that won't be coming now if there's no work to be done at these grocery stores then these individuals get laid off if there's no freight coming in no people to tally up the logistics then they'll get laid off and so on and so on and so on well our friends in ottawa and my american friends who have their friends in washington dc are still getting the old slap and tickle Ooh, payola 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 here we go all in the name of bloody safety now, what's that tell you? 
tells you it's a real shit show on their part. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And once again, if you like and hear what you see, please click like, subscribe, and share this stuff all around. Don't forget to comment, too. And I encourage all comments, ladies and gentlemen, positive, bad, hateful, thinful, and whatever's off the top of your head. Please, let's get the discussion going. Keep it open and all that, too. And a special mention out there to the Fork and Torch Society from Jason there, uh, who sent me this beautiful hat. Thank you very much, Jason. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, once I get some time, I'll send you some Krusty Connect swagger. I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to follow. Uh, the Fork and Torch Society basically standing up for the blue collar folk. All right? They also sent me a wonderful T-shirt as well. Uh, I haven't taken it out of the package yet, but yeah, here it is. Fork and Torch Society. So a nice hat from uh, these guys and uh, a beautiful T-shirt. So thank you once again, Jason at Fork and Torch Society. Uh, we're going to have a rendezvous, probably a, a Zoom meeting of some sort. I'll bring him on the show sometime soon. And just talk about where he stands and where he stands for and how he does it. Basically, they're freedom fighters, ladies and gentlemen. So before uh, some of my SJW little fans out there want to scream racism, take a look at what they stand for. They talk about your freedoms as well. Freedoms for all Canadians, all colors, all creeds. So don't be uh, throwing the racist card around there. But yeah, please check them out. I'll leave a link in the description for you too. And uh, check out my shop too if you can, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, mugs. And I've got T-shirts, too. So please check it out. Uh, if you do want to donate, you can check me at patreonpodbean.com slash Krusty Canuck. Uh, same thing, the mugs and all that, too. And you can also find uh, my shop link in the description as well for you as all to check out. Got hats, T-shirts, swimsuits, shorts, mugs. I've got a flask. i got a couple of mugs. So please feel free to check out my shop. Buy some Krusty Canuck swagger today. <coughs> anyway, carrying on with more of this prepare. Now, I'm not saying stock up ammo, stock up all this food, right? Prepare for your soul, your psyche, okay? There's going to be some projected and manufactured hard times ahead, okay? Do what you can to hold on whatever work you have. Do what you can to hold on to your loved ones. Do what you can to hold on each other. And do what you can to hold on to your sanity, there is light out there, brothers and sisters, in this manufactured darkness, and we have to find it, and we have to fight for it. And I would say more so now than, let's say, six years ago, when the so-called liberal brand was elected. Okay? I think now we have to hold on more, more so and tighter and stronger than ever before. When I look back at my grandparents' lives and what they went through in the Great Depression, there were no social programs out there to help them. There wasn't a welfare state. There wasn't a welfare bin. There were certain cooperatives that built up in certain communities over time. But they had to hustle and they had to work really hard to get ahead just to get something to eat or to put some kind of clothes on their back. And I never really heard the stories when they talked about Christmas and get-togethers, but they did what they could to survive to get things together to get build things up to do what they can to keep food in their table keep the lights on and keep fire in the stove to keep everything warm during the harsh winters now what changed that dynamic in the 1930s was a nasty little war called world war ii which put people back to work again which put people back into perspective got things going unfortunately millions were killed in the process I don't want to see it come to that, ladies and gentlemen. I don't. I don't want to see those kind of mandates rear its ugly head, even though the vaccine mandates have, have done more than enough to uh, keep us on our toes for no reason at all other than just basic control and fear, which some of these clowns would like to promote, right? And, and, and no real, real uh, jurisdiction or, or proof or reason for it other than more fear. And we know the Omicron is not as bad as the Delta variant. Uh, the South African doctors that have discovered it have basically said it's not as bad. It does spread, but it's not as bad. Who knows? Maybe I had the whole, you know, the whole Omicron variant. Because I did say I was sick during the Christmas holidays. So maybe I had mine. I don't know. 
We'll see. But I'm still here now. I'm still live and kicking. Still full of piss and vinegar and still producing shows for you all there. So I think I'm doing all right. You know, I think I'm doing okay. You know, and not that it really matters at the moment, but uh, I still want to keep uh, you know, making these shows for you. And I still want to try to keep bringing light to people that are just not sure. You know, to my listeners, viewers out there, I'll say once again, you guys are all awesome. You rock. Uh, the past couple weeks, I've had some nice comments uh, via email and via Facebook. Thank you once again. And uh, we, we try to get, I tried at least to get uh, some sanity into this chaos that they keep promoting here. But like I said, I've got a video here uh, with uh, a conservative counterpart versus uh, Jean-Yves Duclos, uh, Canada's new health minister uh, since the last federal election. Uh, this guy has a background in economics. He's not an actual medical doctor. I think I might have said that, but he's not a medical doctor. He's got some doctoral uh, knowledge in economics. So I guess you can call him a doctor of money, if that makes any sense. <laughs> but uh, I'll play this video for you all, and I want you to listen carefully to the non-answers this clown is giving in one of the recent question periods here, ladies and gentlemen. Just another typical liberal response in regards to uh, what they're going to do with our money and how they're going to do it, right? So every time, you know, I, I hear these people talk about uh, safety and they talk about how they're going to save this, how they're going to save that for us. I really don't see anything great about it. I, I, I don't. I, I really don't. So I'll, I'll let you decide, ladies and gentlemen. I'll let you decide for yourselves and just listen carefully. You know, the, the standing community health, this is just a recent uh, question period. So uh, you decide folks, you know, listen carefully to the buffoonery that's coming out of his mouth. Um, you know, certainly as conservatives, we want to make it very, very clear that there's a failure of leadership in this government and being prepared for the pandemic and the unfortunate circumstances that have continued to persist throughout the pandemic. The problem here, of course, is, is that we have lost 30,000 lives in Canada, which is also comparable to the 42,000 Canadians who died during World War II, in which we mounted a massive effort for change. This government has not done that, and this failure of leadership has left the provinces only with the ability to have lockdowns as their primary method of treatment. So the unfortunate thing is, is that's what we're left with as Canadians. So Minister Duclos, I have a few questions for you, sir. Uh, before the pandemic began, acute care bed occupancy, according to the OECD uh, in Canada, was 91.6%. Only two countries were worse. Are you aware of this problem, sir? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and thank you, uh, Member uh, Ellis. Uh, I obviously, I also share in the... Okay, check out them shades. Oh, my God, he looks almost like a mafioso Don. I got enough for you, can't refuse. I'll give you, make you a deal, you know what I mean? I tell you what, we'll give you so many vaccinations and then so many pills, and they'd be good to go. Hey, what 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 else what can I do for you? Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, knowledge and the uh, the sadness of of these thirty thousand people having died. This being said, because of the hard work we made we did together, we avoided the situation that we saw in many other countries, including in our southern southern uh, uh, border. Now, if we had had the same death rate as in the United States, we would have ended with 90,000, 90 death rates. And that's a tribute. Yeah, yes, sir. I understand that. that. That's a tribute yeah. to the hard work, including the vaccination hard work that we've done over the last few months. That would, I'd like to congratulate and thank everyone that got vaccinated in the last few months every, and everyone that did the work to get those people vaccinated. Sir, I asked you a question very specifically, and, and this is answer period, not question period. Uh, were you aware that the acute care bed occupancy was 91.6% in Canada uh, in pre-pandemic days? So two things on that. The first thing that we know is vaccination is going to remain the key. We want people... Sir, I don't think I asked you anything about, about the vaccinations. Second, the, second answer, the second answer is that we have provided $63 billion exactly for that purpose purposes of increasing abilities and capacity in our healthcare units, including the ICU units, obviously. Uh, during the election campaign, your party promised to hire 7,500 new physicians, uh, nurses and nurse practitioners. And how many of these have been hired since the election, September 21st? We have indeed promised a total of... Yeah, really, I got no idea what you're talking about. I really don't know. I got no idea. I was never there. She said she was 18. 
$25 billion additional to what we have invested during COVID-19, which I repeated about $63 billion just to protect the health and safety. Just, just the bodies, sir, not the numbers, just involved, the bodies. That involves a total of about $6 billion for primary care access to the family doctor, $7 billion to, to try to, you know, how many, how many have been look hired, after sir? all that. How many of the 7,500 have been hired? 7,500 well, people, how many have been hired? Simple, so let simple me question. Be even more, let me be, be even more clear. 63 billion invested until now with obviously thousands of nurses and doctors that are being paid and being recruited and being provided with the appropriate care that they need. Sir, to how, many, so how, many many new, how many new hires since September 21st that your government promised? So $63 billion, that's obviously of great substance and great value to that, my that, that's not bodies. colleagues. And they have been able that they've been able to not only to recruit, but to maintain, and more and equally importantly, to provide the working conditions that they deserve to look is, after so many others. Th those are people that are there, sir. Is it fair to say that you do not know how many people have been hired that you promised? So not only are these people you not know, be looked or look or are they look being looked after because they need to look after so many others. And that's why we were so pleased to add another twenty five. Yeah, more non answers, John. More non answers. Sure yeah. Those yep. significant investments would continue over the short and the longer term. Yeah, I guess you're just refusing to answer my question. I appreciate that. Uh, do you know that the emergency room wait times in Canada are the worst in the OECD? And do you have a plan to change that, sir? So we not only do we obviously keep uh, increasing and investing through the Canada Health Transfer, but we've also added another $11 billion just a few years ago to look after the mental health and the home care services that seniors and many others across Canada uh, need. We've had, we've had another $63 billion during COVID-19 to look after the emergency health care needs that the provinces and territories are faced with. And we are adding more resources as we exit from the crisis and eventually rebuild the damage, you know, repair the damage that the crisis has created. Do you know how many ICU beds we have in Canada, sir? So I would tell you that that differs obviously across provinces and territories, and that has been sustained fortunately because of the strong collaboration between provinces and territories and the federal government. I've had six recent meetings with my health ministerial colleagues. Now this is an important way to collaborate together and to look after the needs that so many across Canada are feeling right now in the current crisis. Sir, are you aware that Canada has the lowest number of hospital beds uh, out of 20 of 29? We rank 29th out of 33 states. So the OECD, are you aware of that, sir? Simple yes so or no are, answer. Simple yes or no would be great. We are aware of two things. First, not only was it a challenge before COVID-19, but obviously that challenge has been increased during COVID-19. That's why we are Look, we're continuing our efforts with provinces and territories, not only to exit from COVID-19, which is the key priority now, but as I said earlier, to repair the damages created by the, created by the crisis. And a special thank you to the kind people at True North for posting it and uh, for uh, sharing it with us all here. So you listen to him. Not answers again. You know, oh, we did all these wonderful things. Billions and billions have been spent on this issue. And how many jobs have come out of it? People have been fired. People have been let go. People have been threatened. People have been fined. And yet nothing. Non-answers again. Non-answers one more F in time. So, ladies and gentlemen, this also brings me to a very, very special edition of... The Canadian, the Canadian polar, polar Vortex, vortex of Bullshit. bullshit. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, a very, very special edition of the Canadian Board of Voltex of Bullshit. Another Canadian politician under the table, getting slaps and tickles, getting a salad toss in the DVP, all that good stuff. And for what? To tow a party line. So without further ado, I guess the winner of this edition of... The Canadian, the Canadian Polar, Polar Vortex, Vortex of... Bullshit goes to none other than, wait for it. Uh, that's right. You guessed it. Jean-Yves Duclos, ladies and gentlemen. Yay. All right. Exactly. 
for being the newly appointed health minister of Canada. Look after the affairs when it comes to health, because Patty Haydu did such a wonderful job being a graphic designer and telling us what to do. <laughs> exactly, right? Yes, of course. I really don't think she could draw her way of a wet paper bag, to be honest with you. So, Mr. Duclos, how does it feel to actually win the Canadian Polar Vortex of bullshit? Please, enlighten us all. I'm so happy I could just shit. Oh, I bet you could, sir. I bet you could. And I bet you've got caught your pant down. You'd be probably shitting like a storm. Anyhow, this has been another episode of the Canadian Polar Vortex of Bullshit. Exactly. So that's all it is. So well done, sir, on winning the Canadian Polar Vortex of Bullshit. For more of your non-answers, especially lying to the Canadian taxpayers that line your pockets every time there's been a crisis. Now, like that truck driver said, now I'm not going to pinpoint any one or two, but I've said this before, the majority of politicians, the majority of parliamentarians said yes to a pay raise two years ago and last year. Now, are they going to do it again this April? Are they going to do it again this April, pending on the crisis that we might be seeing? Okay. Where there's nothing coming in, nothing coming out, not enough trade coming across the border, not enough fuel being produced. Right. Stephen Gilbert even said a couple of days ago that they want to phase out fossil fuels in this country in two years. Really? You want to do that? Right. Do you not, do you, do you not pay attention to where Canada sits on the globe? my friend, and how winters impact Canada as a whole. Okay. From Point Pelee to the North Pole. Okay. From Gander, Newfoundland to Northern BC to the Yukon. Do you not see how Canadian winters affect Canadians? And yet you want to phase out fossil fuels in two years. Is that the logical thing? Oh, you want to phase out Canadian fuel. And you want to bring in Saudi, Nigerian, and Venezuelan fuel, 10 bucks a barrel, do it cheaply. So you and your buddies in La Belle Provence, who make a racket out of it, can get your kickbacks while the other Canadians got to struggle and work harder for you. Okay? Same thing you, Mr. Duclos. Same thing you, Miss Freeland. Same thing you, Mr. Trudeau. And all the so-called opposition, with the exception of Pierre Polyev and other committee members that grill these mother you-know-whats, Right? Come on, people. Start doing your effing job. Start standing up for this country. That's what I'm saying. And to my fans and listeners and first-time viewers and listeners out here, we can do better than that. Okay? No wonder people are losing faith in mainstream media. No wonder people are losing faith in mainstream authority here. You guys are off your rockers. Honestly. Right? Six months ago, oh, there won't be mandates. Now you're putting mandates out there. Okay? All you guys are getting paid. All you guys find more ways to make yourselves a bit, you know, leaner when it comes to the pocketbook while you're screwing people like me, my wife, my family, my friends, and everyone else in my circle. Okay? So you're not doing your jobs. You're not. <laughs> and from running in the last election... I, I really got to see how many people really, really cared about what they're doing. Okay. What they were doing there and what, how they were doing it. Okay. It's, 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 it's just a joke. This is no longer the Canada that I grew up with. This is no longer the Canada that I fought for. Right. As a veteran, as a taxpayer, as a husband, as an uncle, as a friend, you know, as a laborer, and just as a guy, I, I'm not impressed with you at all. I, I'm not impressed with any one of you. Maybe a few when you stand up in Parliament and you point and you put these people on the spot. But we've seen the non-answers. I, I just gave you an example of the non-answer that a lot of these weirdos like to give us. Okay? So if any of you wankers out there that are in Parliament and you're happily watching and listening to this podcast, you better smarten up. Okay? Because I really hate to say, I hate to say it, but you're pushing people into their corners. And people, when they get pushed into corners, they get desperate. And desperate times lead to desperate things. And nine times out of ten, those desperate things 
lead to something violent. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, desperate times lead to desperate things. And I don't want to see violence. No, nobody in their right mind wants to see violence. But we, we've seen the division that these guys create. We've seen our own prime minister on French television say, though, the uh, people who don't get vaccinated are racist and misogynists, right? So here's a guy leading a country and probably one, one of the best countries on the planet, and he just created a division right there and then. Boom. Well, if you don't do this, then you're that, okay? I'm getting sick and tired of the finger wagging and the pointing and the division. We are better than that. Our history has proven it, ladies and gentlemen. We can do better, a hell of a lot better. It's time to put these people on the spot. So I'll support the freedom fighters. I'll support the truckers. I will support all the rallies in Calgary, Edmonton, Vancouver, all the major cities in this country. God bless the people in Montreal that are going out and saying, stop this curfew, stop this madness. And that's another thing, too, with La Belle Provence sitting there taxing people that don't want to get the shot, right? Can you say extortion, right? You can't wear a hijab. You can't wear a cross. You can't wear anything Jewish or anything Christian or anything Muslim or Sikh or Buddhist while you're at work because you'll get fined or you get sent home. Oh, but you won't get the jab. So we're going to give you another tax anyway. How many more taxes the people of Quebec have to keep paying to make the likes of Lego and the separatist happy for what? How many people in Ontario got to pay more? to sit in their hands and wait for their kids to get an education or to go to a store to grab a pack of smokes or to grab a burger or to grab a steak, okay? How many more of these lockdowns are going to be sufficient? How do you honestly think these are helping people when you blatantly see the numbers every effing day? Things are going down. Nothing's coming in. Nothing's coming out. So what do you expect to happen? Puppy dogs and fairy tales? Well, the ever so tolerant Canadian, the ever so polite Canadian is just going to sit on their hands and wait for a biscuit. Not fucking likely. Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, I have been Krusty Canuck on this beautiful 18th of January, 2022. That's a new year and we can do better. I know we can. I have faith in you. I hope to God you have faith in things too. There will be light in the end of this tunnel. And this manufactured darkness, it is just <laughs> it is just redundant how these clowns are constantly getting away with it. But we will persevere, ladies and gentlemen. And I want a special mention out there to uh, yesterday, Martin Luther, Martin Luther King's birthday. He had a dream. Let's keep that alive, folks. Okay? Let's keep that alive. Keep that spirit going where we judge on character and not in color. Right? I've always judged people on their character. I judge in their actions and how they treat others. And it never fazed me what color, what gender, what ethnicity, what language they spoke. I judge people on their actions. And so should you. But like I say, this has been another Krusty Connect podcast, episode 161. And thank you all for the donations that I've received in the past couple of weeks and the kind emails. And keep going. Spread this around all your uh, social media platforms too. If you can, ladies and gentlemen, do what you can. And I'll do my best to keep every episode up and running to the best of my ability. And uh, I want to thank you all for tuning in. And I say once again, thank you to all the kind words and responses uh, I've been receiving the past little while. Because without you, this podcast would be irrelevant. So anyhow, folks, like I say, look after your friends and loved ones. Do what you can to help each other in these trying times. It's going to be cold in the next couple of days in my area. So make sure you got some extra fuel. Bundle up. You know, don't forget your long johns. You're going to need those. <laughs> And uh, once again, I'll be working the next 10 days, so I won't have another episode up probably until another couple of weeks. I might get a tidbit in or two. We'll see what we can do, but just stay updated to my community page and my Facebook page, respectively, too. And I'm going to tweak my uh, web page as well in the near future, so be ready for that. But needless to say, ladies and gentlemen, do what you can to help each other out in these trying times. Keep your chin up, the old British adage, and to my American friends, same with you lads. Persevere, ladies and gentlemen. We will overcome this garbage and we will find light in the tunnel. But do you can help your friends and neighbors out. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, humanity and merit wins the day. We got this and I believe in you. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>
Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. This has been another episode of the Krusty Canuck Podcast. Stay sane and thank you for listening. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast. Mama always said I had a face for radio.